Hello, Town of Rochester. Thank you for tuning in to the second video of this three-part series, Education in the Town of Rochester. As kids are diving into the second semester of school, we think, what a year, right? It seems like it's been more of a challenge than ever with social distancing, staying home with your family and remote learning, or trying to figure out the scheduling of this hybrid model. It becomes a whole new adventure figuring out what school will be like in the future. So many challenges. So in honor of back to school time, let's zoom in on the schools from all those years ago. Education in the early days in the Rondat Valley was a family affair. Families were large as children often were the only labor available. Boys learned by daily experience and were taught by fathers or adult males in the immediate family. Mothers, grandmothers, and maiden aunts were responsible for the education of the girls. Children were taught what they needed for survival in their world. In the mid-1600s, education began to change. In the year 1633, Dutch colonists established the first public school in America, though it wasn't until 1750 when teachers got more experienced and learned the ways of teaching that education became interesting. It's hard to imagine, but in the 1800s, a single teacher taught grades one through eight in the same room. Rural areas were too sparsely populated to support multiple classrooms, so towns built one-room schools about 20 by 30 feet large. One-room schoolhouses were common, especially near the farms or small towns where most families lived. The teacher would stand at the front where there would be a big blackboard, the students might have rows of desks or just benches to sit on. Paper was expensive in the 1800s, so students wrote on a thin slab of slate. Younger kids sat in the front and older students sat in the back. They learned reading, writing, math, geography, and history. Teachers would call a group of students to the front of the classroom for their lesson, while other grades worked at their seats. Sometimes older kids helped teach the younger pupils. There wasn't any electricity back then, so light came from the windows and a few lamps. The schoolhouses were heated by a fireplace or a large metal stove that burned wood to stay warm. Families were expected to chip in to provide wood for the school, so lots of times kids walked four to five miles to school carrying a log or two. But that wasn't the only thing the children would have to carry. Textbooks were equally scarce. Students had to bring books from home, often borrowing used textbooks from older kids. Members of the class never had matching copies. Kids brought their lunches to school in metal pails. Every student drank water from a bucket filled by the older boys using the same tin cup. Most students only went about 78 days a year. Kids hardly ever got perfect attendance. Bad weather kept everyone away, and when students' families lived on farms, they were expected to help out and stay home from school when things got busy during each harvest. The reason we have summer vacation today is because summer is when everything's growing. That's one thing we can thank the schools of the past for. The earliest records referencing public education in the town of Rochester began in 1794 in the district of Mombacus. New town, known as Whitfield, was in 1795. Kaiserak and Pleasant Ridge, known as Rock Hill, by 1798. By 1853, there were 15 school districts for a town population of 3,174. The town of Rochester had 19 school districts, 16 listed as historic school districts, many of which still stand today. Many have been converted into homes, businesses, or a local town court and museum. Allegraville School District Number 1. The original schoolhouse burned to the ground in 1877 and rebuilt using brick, making it the only brick school in town. In 1953, the property was deeded to the Accord Fire Commissioners and is known today as the Allegraville Firehouse. Accord School District Number 2. This was the site of the original meetings in the town dating back to the early 1700s. In 1856, parents petitioned for a newer, improved building schoolhouse, large enough to house 198 library books and separate the boys from the girls. It was known for having one of the highest educated teachers, Alton Brooks Parker. Parker, in his later years, unsuccessfully ran for president of the United States against Theodore Roosevelt. In later years, the building was used for the Grange Church 
and other meetings. Today it is not used and it can be located next to our local hardware store, A&M Hardware. Whitfield School District number three, originally known as Newtown, the 1795 town records list this school with children from seven families in attendance. Before the Civil War, the students attended a low stone building. They sat on a bench along the wall while a shelf projected from the wall serving as a desk. After the war, a new building was constructed to help further educational projects. A stone foundation was built in 1800. The bell tower and outhouse still remain on this property and it's converted into a home located on the end of Cliff Road and Upper Whitfield Road. Pinebush School District number four. The Pinebush School consisted of a one room building, two outhouses, a coal bin, and a woodshed. It was still operating as a school in 1941 with 17 students. Only the front wall remains intact and the building is currently known as Ron's Auto Repair on Route 209. Cherrytown School District number five. In 1852, land was deeded to the trustees of the school district for them to build a new schoolhouse. The schoolhouse and bell tower remained intact where the bell would ring on special occasions. Unfortunately, the building was set fire and burned to the ground in the mid-2000s, taking with it a special treasure. Patalkum School District Number 6 Currently known as the Town of Rochester Courthouse, recently school maps in a watering can, children's chairs, and books were found in an attic of the building. This is located on Sampsonville Road in Gerhonkson, New York. Liebhart School District Number 7. Located at 900 Queens Highway, as of 1996, the outhouse still remained. However, much of the building was renovated into a family residence. Granite School District Number 8. Little information remains on this schoolhouse. All we know is that it appeared on a map in 1853 and above the door was engraved 1857. This schoolhouse can be located on the corner of Granite and Lower Granite Road. Tabasco School District number nine, located in town records in 1853, later owned by the Accord Fire District. The bell tower and bell remain intact. This could be located at 545 Samsonville Road. Palentown School District number 10. Based on records, the school may have been built as early as 1830. A deed from 1851 lists the school district as having 14 students of all ages. Most of the 1860 renovated building is still intact. Some restoration has been made to keep the bell tower and bell in place. It is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The Palantown School is unique among the one-room schoolhouses because most of it is still intact. Thankfully, the school remained in the possession of the town because it was used as a meeting hall and a polling place for voting in the town of Rochester. Look for open house museum hours in warmer weather. You will not be disappointed touring this historic treasure. Kaiserak School District number 11. The Kaiserak School was built in 1798 with children from nine families in attendance. It is now a one-family house on Kaiserak Road that you pass going to the Rhonda Valley School Campus. Medicahonks School District number 12 was established in 1853. Renovations have converted this schoolhouse into a home which is located across the street from local store known as Star Grocers on Medicahonks Road. Rock Hill School District number 13, mentioned in the town records in 1798 as Pleasant Ridge School. The original school was on the Mill Rocks on the Rock Hill Road past the migrant labor camp. Mambacus School District number 14, the earliest mention of this school was in 1794. It's located on the corner of Sampsonville Road and Waterfalls Road. Much of the building has been altered to accommodate living quarters. 
Rochester Center School District number 15. Located at 435 Queens Highway, this school appears on the map in 1853. Now currently serves as a one-family residence. Gerhonson Heights School District number 16. The date of the building reads 1889. In 1993, it was purchased with the original wood stove that provided warmth for the students remaining intact. This can be found on Minnewaska Trail Road in Gerhonson. The Schools of Mystery, Millhook School. This school was never given a district number. That is because there's been many discussions whether there was a Millhook School at all. The building appeared on a map in 1853 with the bell tower and framing of a schoolhouse, but no information on the school itself. The building was moved to another location to be used as a kitchen for mill workers. The foundation still remains on Medicahonks Road near the Rondat Valley Campground. Vernoy Falls. It appears on a map in 1853. However, the location has always remained in question. Old foundations are located near the stream bed and believed to be the structures from the school and a mill. St. Josen. Many rumors indicated that this schoolhouse did not exist. A sketch from 1853 showing a schoolhouse in St. Josen neighborhood, but was later discovered to be that of Rock Hill. In the year 1956, the Marbletown Central School combined with the Union Free Schools of Kerhonkson, Accord, and Rosendale, as well as the elementary schools of Cottekill, The Clove, Whitfield, Pine Bush, Cherrytown, Leapheart, Mumbacus, Rock Hill, Kerhonkson Heights. They all form the Rondat Valley Central School District. Accord Elementary School. Located off Main Street Accord behind the Accord Firehouse, it shut its doors in 1984 and became the district office, housing all the district records. Unfortunately, on February 23, 1995, the structure burned to the ground, losing nearly all the district's records. Thank you for joining me today, and don't forget to tune in next week as we dive into the industrialization and canal era in the town of Rochester.